have industrial in its name, a site that have uh, commercial in its name, a site with uh, uh, zoo in its name. What else? Basically, if you think about it, the names of these 10 sites are about the 10 basic most important industries that would be needed to get going an underground life totally independent from the surface life especially if they are if they are connected with underground tube shuttles and trains this was the achilles feet heel of the german underground system they didn't have any underground connection they had to haul all the supplies by 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 railroad by train and this is where the the, the allies got them they couldn't move the gasoline to the tanks they couldn't, couldn't move the shells to the uh, artillery and so on. So basically, under every major city, there is a complex of underground, I can safely extrapolate from here, there is a complex of underground construction that is specified in such a way that you can continue with uh, life even if the life ceases on the surface of the planet. This is the alternative two scenario from the alternative three book. The card-carrying party members of the Illuminati, the gold card members of the Illuminati, have their secret access code, so in case of anything that happens on the planet, nuclear holocaust, uh, polar shift, uh, or whatever, they have a safe place to go on. There have been science fiction films about uh, such colony, people from such colony emerging way into the future when everything was destroyed on the surface. And they realized that still life on the surface was much lovelier and nicer than life in this regimented fascist community where when you reach a certain age, you are killed by the computer to make space for the newly coming individuals. Again to some tabloids, who's killing off the Star Wars scientists? Are these people really dying in these freeze, freak accidents or is it just a way of removing them from this society and making them to go black, to use the jargon, to start working in the underground research facilities or the facilities beyond this planet. Those are actual deaths, not disappearances. These are, these are actual deaths, but uh, Helga is here to tell us about the actual death of her father, where she pulled the hair from his head and it turned out to be a toupee on probably a wax head and her father came to her a month after he was actually buried in an actual death. He continued working for a German university and even published papers from a Göttingen University. The underground openings of uh, one of the three underground complexes uh, around uh, Los Angeles, a photograph came from Norio Hayakawa, uh, shot from a private plane, no restrictions over the airspace. This is a private facility, but you can fly over. Is that the airfield facility? One of the three. The, the Northrop have them, has them, the Lockheed, and what was the other one? The Rockwell International, or, or Douglas, one of, the, one, of, one of the three. I mean, this is a massive facility. This roof probably moves here, exposing some entry. Very interesting facility. Another facility here. On the pylon, we see a... Uh, UFO shaped object being tested for radar reflection or some other beam weapons test that they do. There are many books that talk about strange things happening on the moon. We saw alien bases on the moon, but Fred Steckling shows giant motherships hovering low over the moon's surface. Secrets of our spaceship moon. Our Mysterious Spaceship Moon by John Wilson and The Moon Gate by William Bryan talk about massive fraud perpetrated upon humanity by NASA. Fraud number one, there's air on the moon and nine out of the ten flags of Apollo wave and flutter in the wind, some of them very violently. This is another waving flag here. What is the mysterious force that keeps the flag from drooping down and uh, following the force of gravity, other than the wind blowing at it? Or if the flag is made out of sheet metal as a statue in exactly in this form? They, they do have a wire that holds it out. 
Uh, yeah, but, but still flopping in the breeze. So. Still, because the wire doesn't come to the end. This is the first generation flag where the wire was going midways. Mm -hmm. Then they fixed that. In In the first generation flag, the, 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 the plank or the wire goes halfway, two-thirds. In the second generation flag, it goes all the way. The NASA ID numbers are, this is 20 shots later and several hours later because the uh, shades are longer here. And in the third generation flag, they glued the whole flag to a sheet metal and it was behaving like a piece of cardboard <laughs> flying in the wind. Because of the wind, and I will show you the, the flag going like crazy, full left to full right all, all, over the, all over the screen, in a minute. The answer, my friend, is blowing in the wind. <laughs> a small life for NASA, a big life for all mankind. This is the title of my upcoming super production. Uh, in many astronomical books about the moon, uh, my focus is bad, and I will provide a better slide. If you look carefully, just don't miss any of the older books on astronomy with moonshots in the 60s and 70s. They didn't know what they were releasing. Now it's impossible to get the same shot. If you look with magnifying glass, you will find strange rectangular things, some observation domes in the middle of the craters, uh, roads going on, many strange, many strange things. Here, for example, there is a rectangular structure. There is a another structure, and this whole thing is either a shade from a tall something. I mean, a very careful observation would find many things that should not be there. The Moon Observer's Handbook or Exploring Space with a Camera, especially this book. Fred Stecklin discovered lakes on the moon, if the light is not reflecting into the camera, it is uh, marble black, pitch black. If the light reflects and hits the camera, it shines as if a lake of quicksilver, which he verified by getting Californian lakes from his private plane. Very same reflect reflectance as the lakes on the moon. There were huge, giant mining machines. This is the smaller reconnaissance vehicle. And this is the bigger mining machine combined that leaves a, uh, what is it, 15 meter wide uh, track, which is 45 <coughs> feet wide track, probably mining <coughs> rare metals on the moon's surface. A uh, party line lies that these are boulders that roll down the hill, but the, you see the machine going up and down and up and down the hills. The uh, magical boulder, the cousin of the magical bullet, uh, we see the moon covered in, in strange uh, greenish coloration. Many of the shots, they say there's vegetation on the moon like in the Arizonian desert. Another greenish coloration. Here, can we lift up the... Yeah. Another slight greenish coloration here, like a sparse Arizonian desert vegetation. And another one in green, this comes from a Apollo 8 photograph. Slight green, especially on the more covered inner walls of the craters. All reddish in autumn, when the vegetation is shedding its leaves. Rare Apollo 8 photograph. Why did they use black and white film? To save money in a $300 billion project? Or to cover it up from us? They said, well, high resolution uh, ability. Sure, but it hides up the vegetation. Nazis water skiing on the moon. I have given about 50 radio interviews all over the country, including uh, a presentation at the prestigious and first royal venue in England, the Royal Wembley Arena, about uh, water skiing on the moon. I heard the rumor by a major radio personality in this country that saw a private 8 millimeter film shot with a private amateur camera. On the moon, one of the astronauts water skiing there on the lake in bathing trunks, which means that 
there is atmosphere, they don't need any students. Uh,